Hey, what's up everybody? Happy New Year. I'm here with another rookie mistake video. Before we get into that, I want to thank all the patrons. Really do appreciate you guys. Some of you guys still got some lessons that we need to do, uh, actually from last month. So if you didn't do last month's, I'm allowing you to chain it together with this month. So you'll have a full hour video lesson with me. You guys who didn't do them, you know who you are reach out and let's get it scheduled. Anybody else who's interested in one-on-one -on -one video lessons with me, getting some videos early, anything like that, just uh, let me know or uh, join the Patreon group. There's a link in the description. Also consider checking out Collage Skateboards, clubdist.com, that's C-L-U-B-D-I-S-T.com. And uh, we have a few decks left on our actual website, collageskateboards.com. But for the time being, we're kind of phasing that out. So if you're interested in supporting, those are ways that you can. You can also like and subscribe, you know, the usual thing. So let's get into the rookie mistake video. This one's a little bit different because it's not something that you're physically doing that I notice. This is actually a mindset that I've noticed. And it is in my opinion, a pretty new phenomenon to skateboarding because I've been skating for 25 years. So I had the pleasure of skating long before social media was a thing or was even uh, a concept really. And I've noticed in the past maybe seven years, this phenomenon. And what this is, is uh, beginners, allowing their thoughts and allowing the overload of information to affect their skateboarding. And it's something that never happened. I, at least I never observed it happening in the late nineties, in the early and in, in the early aughts throughout the aughts, the early 2010s, and I didn't notice people doing this until around 2015, 2016. So what am I getting at here? Well, first, let me just put this into a bit of context, right? So skateboarding is an activity in the truest sense of the word. It's something that you physically have to get out and do. It's not something that takes place in the mind, right? So it's not a conceptual thing. It's not a theoretical thing. There's a great deal of thinking that goes into it. However, a lot of what you're doing when you're learning the skateboard is that, for one, at the beginning stage of skateboarding, some of the issues that you might have, even if you're a natural athlete, right? You're a natural athlete. You pick up on skateboarding naturally. Um, you're still going to have trouble landing on your tricks in the beginning. And a lot of this has to do with your brain trying to protect you because you're on top of this foreign object that's rolling and you're attempting to do these difficult maneuvers to land back on that rolling thing. And in the beginning, you know, a lot of people will reach out to me and they'll say they're having trouble putting their front landing with their front foot on the board with their kickflip. And I don't have any way that I can get you to put your front foot on the board after you catch your kickflip with the back. Subconsciously, your mind doesn't want you to land on the board because it perceives danger and everything in our body is basically trying to keep us alive, right? So a big part of learning how to skateboard is learning how to, in a, in, in a sense, trick your brain into landing on these things and and and, and being able to be in control in that moment so that you have the ability to control your front foot and have it land on the board. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen until you've familiarized yourself and meant you become mentally comfortable on top of the skateboard. And the only way to do that is through reps, hundreds, maybe thousands of reps is the only thing that's going to get you comfortable on your skateboard. And hopefully... After a good amount of time, you'll be somewhere similar to where I am, where I've had this conversation with a lot of skaters who skate at a higher level and everyone seems to have the same experience. Like when I go to do certain tricks, the most of the tricks that I do frequently these days, 
it feels like everything slows down. And I'm not talking about like one in a hundred or even one in 10. I'm talking about like 60, 70% of the time when I'm going to do a trick, it feels like everything's slowing down. And even though, you know, most of your tricks take less than a second to actually happen from the time that you pop, it might feel like it's three or four seconds that I'm doing certain tricks. And this isn't an experience that's unique to me. Uh, most of the skaters that I've talked to that are at a certain level, you know, am pro guys or whatever, have they experience the same phenomenon. And this is what we're going for. But you're not going to get there unless you're out there putting in the time and you're familiarizing yourself with the skateboard. And like, just like any other thing that you do, you're like opening up the neural pathways in your brain so that you become familiar experienced and in control when you're doing these things. So something that I've noticed going back to the actual topic of this rookie mistake video is that I've had a few students and it's always adult students. Of course, of course it's always adult students because adults, we're the ones who get preoccupied with things like this. We're the ones who suffer in our daily life and application of, 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 of things that we're trying to practice from the choice paralysis that's created by the, the, just the amount of information that we have at our thumb tips, right? Like, so I, I started noticing this with a couple of my adult, adult students and the first one, this guy was good. Like I started teaching him so that he could skate contests. He could do like nolly nose slides. And I think I taught him how to like Nolly heel flip nose slide and then we were trying to learn how to do it down a hubba i taught him how to backsmith i had a crappy backsmith on flat bars i had to learn how to backsmith like the entire flat bar at a skate park so i could teach him how to do it better and it changed my skating skating with him and he was so talented and i really felt like he had the ability to you know like when i'm talking about being successful at skateboarding it's relative, right? It's whatever you want to do. Being successful is being able to accomplish that. So if your goal is to be pro, right, that's a little difficult because you can become a legitimate pro skater, but it takes a lot of work, right? Uh, if your goal is simply to be the best skater that you can, to be able to walk outside and see an obstacle and be able to go and do tricks on that and not have to worry and stumble, you know, I, like I'm always trying to help someone meet their goal. His goal was to skate contests and I felt like he could have done very well in those contests. But what inevitably happened is when fitness information started to become more prevalent and when skaters started to see ourselves more as athletes, which is a good thing because you do need to take care of your body. And I have benefited from taking much better care of my body now than I did, especially in my early 20s, because none of this information was that prominent. And us skaters didn't see ourselves as athletes. I think there's a lot of things that that has to do with, you know, a part of it is like, we're out here doing crazy things in our street clothes, right? So it's hard to see yourself similar to somebody who puts on a whole bunch of a big old padded suit and a bunch of spandex and has to have someone blow a whistle for them to do something when we're contending with people on the street cars uh you might have uh, you know like cracks in the concrete so it seems very for lack of a better word real compared to other sports right but the fact is we really are athletes. Uh, but inevitably when social media came around and the fit, social media fitness space became a thing and people started to talk to skaters and skaters started to see themselves more as athletes, this information isn't only going to people that are at a professional level, right? And when I say a professional level, I do mean an amateur skater, even a flow skater, that like in any other sport, those would be considered professionals. Only in skateboarding do we have the strange distinction that you're only professional if you have your name on a board. When I was amateur, I was making money. I got I had a couple sponsors that were giving me money. I was probably getting about 800 bucks a month, and which you know you can't completely live off, but if you're making that money every month, plus people were giving me product and sending me on trips, and I was getting photo incentives and contest incentives, 
that's considered a professional. You have to pay taxes as a professional. So in any other section of the world, you're considered a professional. But we have our own strange distinction in skateboarding that's been allowed to thrive because skateboarding for so long was counterculture. Um, but <laughs> like I was saying, this information, it's not only getting out to professional skaters. That information's also getting out to beginning skaters. And there's a problem with that. Now, there's no problem with you wanting to stretch before you skate. You wanting to take your uh, nutrition more seriously so that you better have the ability to skate and you have better recovery and you have better endurance. And, you know, wanting to cross train so that you're strong enough to meet the demands of skateboarding. But what I've seen is certain people get so concerned with that that it stops them from skating. And the first person in particular... You know, we were talking about skating contests, and I had him backsmithing this entire flat bar, nollie heel nosing ledges, nollie crooking ledges, back tailing ledges, holding them, front tailing them, being able to hold them. We went over all of the basics. We went over how to transition between your bigger trick to your transitional tricks in the middle to another big trick in your contest run. And then at some point, uh, he got really consumed with the fitness aspect to the point where he was going and working out four and five days a week and this was supposed to be in service of the skating but when it came time for the actual skating and this was a person i was confident in i was inviting this person to come and skate with myself and the at the time the warco team while we were filming the sun machine video and he was like kind of paralyzed and i could tell and he was so involved in the preparation that was supposed to make his skating better and make his body more resilient up to that skating that it was stopping him from actually doing the skating. And he would say, I'm not ready yet. I want to hit this in my training before I go out and skate street because of this. And I even experienced this with another student later on who wasn't at the same level as this person. This, this student, I was actually teaching, I taught how to board slide a curb, how to, well, we started with a parking block, how to do like a little stall, like a board slide. And then we learned how to slide that. And then we learned how to go to a double-sided curve and slide that and have to turn out when there's no end. And how to slappy nose slide, how to ollie a two-stair and then a three-stair. And at some point, this person got concerned with the same things. Uh, with some training videos that they had found on Instagram and how they needed to do this, and how they started out their day with these dynamic stretches, and they didn't feel good, so now they didn't want to skate. And I've seen this more and more as social media has basically taken over our lives, and as the social media fitness space has gotten bigger, and it, it consumes a lot of people. And I just want to say to you guys that if you're letting anything outside of skating stop you from skating when you're not injured, it's a big mistake and it's a big rookie mistake. And even the most mild, meek, professional skater or amateur skater, you know, just to, to, to keep it within the, uh, the nomenclature of skateboarding, flow skater, the one thing that I know and, 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 you know, I'm also a musician. I think I, I'm comparable in my skill level with music to where I am with skateboarding. And outside of my skate life, I tend to hang out probably the most with musicians, some of whom are successful, some of whom do it simply as a hobby, but all of them who have a certain level of proficiency with what they do, they're able to express themselves and they enjoy what they do. They go out, they play shows, some of them tour. And I'm also friends with martial artists. Again, some of them who are professionals, some of them who are taking amateur fights, some of them who are fighting in smokers or whatever. But there's one thing that I notice that ties all of these people together. That's skaters, that's musicians, that's martial artists, and even really even other disciplines where I know people is that all of these people are what you would call junkyard dogs, pirates. Nothing is going to get in the way of them doing what it is that they want to do. And more than any type of preparation, right? It's good to prepare. 
It's good to take care of your body. It's good to take care of your nutrition. But to be real with you, none of that is going to make you a better skateboarder, right? Um, and the people who actually get good at skating, and 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 I'll, and I'll give you a proof of concept here. Um, when I was growing up, nobody stretched. Nobody cross trained. There were a few people, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think, but I'm trying to think of a skater who was famous for his fitness. And I want to say Chris Lambert, but I'm not sure if that's actually accurate. But most of these guys would show up to the spot smoking cigarettes, and half of them drink beers, and they were still doing tricks. Some of which are amazing even by today's standards. Now, where their lifestyles caught up with them was they didn't have the longevity. And so that's really where all of your preparation, all of your nutrition, all of your cross training is going to pay dividends. It's in your longevity. It's in the output you're able to have in your career. But it's not going to make you a better skater. If you're going to be a good skater, it's going to be because you put in the time on your skateboard. And so if you're a beginner, especially, it's good that you want to take care of your body. But if you're allowing those aspects of the preparation for skateboarding to stop you from actually skating, like I've started to see over the past six, seven years, I mean, wait, 2015, that's nine years now. So over the past almost decade, then you're committing a huge rookie mistake because none of that's going to make you better a better skater. None of that's going to make you learn the tricks that you want to learn. People learned those tricks before skaters took any of this stuff into consideration when basically every skater was like a smoking alcoholic. It would be smoking cigarettes while they were doing their tricks. People still learned the same tricks, basically. We're still doing the same tricks. People are doing them bigger. And and and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you this, like I'm not going to mention any names, like a good portion of the people that you see as professional skaters today in my experience, they're still living the same exact way that they lived before. Um, a lot of them are not, the majority of them, I would actually say, outside of that contest space, because now you have that contest space, which is something different. But I'm going to be real with you. The best skaters out there are pirates still, just like the best martial artists out there are pirates. And if you get in rooms and you hang out and you speak to these people, you're going to notice that. The thing that all of these people have in common, and musicians too, I mean, is they're willing to do anything possible just to do what they love doing. You know, like, for instance, there are tricks that I filmed while I was skating when I, I never stretched, I never did anything where I slept two hours the night before, I, or didn't sleep the night before, and I'm like up doing crazy tricks, and the same for pretty much all of my team members across skating. You know, sometimes we'd be on tour and we'd be camping and we'd stay up all night drinking beer by a campfire fire but we didn't let anything stop us from skating because we love skating and it's that type of tenacity that even if you're not in the best state you're still going to do it now i'm not telling you to go out and drink and smoke cigarettes while you're skating obviously i never drank while i skated um that's never been a thing for me and but i'm just saying i'm using that as an example to say that if you are thinking that you need to do this in order to skate and you're a beginner, you're learning how to ollie, you're learning how to shove it, you're learning how to kickflip, uh, it's a big rookie mistake. You should stretch. You should take care of your body. You shouldn't be out abusing alcohol, abusing drugs, smoking cigarettes, any of that, right? All of that is going to hurt your body objectively not having to do anything to do with not having anything to do with skating but if you think that you need to do those things in order to skate and that if you don't if you're not doing those things that it should stop you from skating like you're not going to accomplish what you want to on your skateboard because the only thing that's going to allow you to accomplish what you want to on a skateboard is skating yeah get out there and skate and uh, it's, that's why it's a double-edged sword because not everyone is in the place where they need that information that's out there. And a lot of times the people that are having the most success on their skateboard 
aren't paying attention to any of those things at all. They're just getting out there and skating. So they're putting in the time and the reps. They're comfortable on their skateboard. They're a- as, as a function of that comfort and the time that they've put in, they're able to break through plateaus and learn more tricks, which allows them to have more fun. And when you're having fun, it's easier for you to learn because it doesn't feel like a chore. Where if you're the other person where you're like, I got to hit this personal best here, with whatever workout because it's going to help me be stronger so that I can go and learn this trick and I'm not going to go and do this trick until I get to this and this is real conversation that I've had come at me from a person that is a huge mistake that stuff is good but has nothing to do with skateboarding so this is a very long-winded video because this is something that's kind of shocking to me that this has become so prevalent and that it's become as prevalent as it has with beginners that you know like because if if you're at a high level you and you're trying to learn tricks for me to learn a new trick I have to learn something extremely difficult like a front crook nollie flip out or like a you know like a kick flip crook nollie varial heel out something like that so I'm basically putting three tricks together so it requires me to be completely dialed in physically clear mentally and I have to actually want to do it so For someone at my level, yes, it is necessary for me to skate the way that I need to skate and want to skate for me to be in that condition. But for a beginner, it's absolutely not necessary. Even though I think you should be taking care of yourself, don't let it stop you from actually skating. And if this is you, take a second, breathe, regroup. Skating is supposed to be fun. So if you're not having fun, then you should maybe uh, adapt a different heuristic change your approach. That's all I got for today. Thank you for watching. Enjoy skateboarding. I put emphasis on the enjoy because we're supposed to be enjoying it. Um, I would, I definitely wouldn't be doing it anymore if I didn't enjoy it, especially the, the cost to my body. But, uh, yeah, peace.